As 2020 comes to a close, I wanted to take time to reflect, but also to learn. To put it shortly, we fought, fought for justice that was not there. We lost, lost countless in the wake of the pandemic. And we worried, worried for what was to come. But overall, I think we longed for an end. I've come to the conclusion that it stems from a deeper longing, one for connection, to see eye to eye, to break everything down to ground zero, just to have common ground with others. Not to mention we were not made for isolation. So in light of all this, I created a personal goal in my own life to go against the tension of this year and to create connections between people, to create solace amongst strife. I have no foolproof way of doing this, merely an idea. An idea to use art, story, sounds, music, visuals, paintings, film, anything at my disposal to evoke an emotion. Something that I believe connects us all. The ability to feel, react, remember, and to act accordingly. We are shaped by every second our lungs give breath. And that alone can be the foundation that connects us. However, it is also what can divide us. So my goal is to create a foundation for people to truly feel an emotion, one that will cultivate connections between communities. As a demonstration of what this could look like, I wanted to talk about a specific piece of media called Journey. To put it simply, it is an interactive experience one that is capable of connecting two completely random individuals, all within a completely unknown yet familiar world. To start off, I'd like to talk about creators. Described as gaming's eclectic, outspoken maestro by Game Informer magazine, Austin Wintry is a composer of mesmerizing aleatoric music. He has experience writing for a very wide variety of mediums, including video games, films, concept music, apps, and more, totaling more than 300 scores in the past 18 years alone. Austin's most well-known work is for the indie video game Journey. In 2012, it became the first Grammy-nominated video game score and was up against scores by Hans Zimmer, Howard Shore, and John Williams for Best Score Soundtrack for Visual Media. This in and of itself can be seen as an impact on the video game industry, further showing the world that it is a legitimate art form, just like film. Austin Wintry is a man of zero regrets and is overall a well-respected composer for both his music, but also his desire to seek after lofty ideas in collaboration with various developers and directors. As he came to work with that game company to create Journey, this became apparent in his music. Not to mention that that game company is a game studio dedicated to creating timeless interactive entertainment that inspires human connection worldwide. Their team fosters a unique approach to interactive media. And together with Austin Wintry, they made something truly beautiful, if you're open to it. This is how the experience begins.
A wall of sound clears your head so you can really focus in on the experience. It gives you no controls, no direction, nothing. However, once the player wanders their way to the top of a hill, their end goal becomes very clear. The mountain. A solo cello line begins to play that will grow to musically embody you, the player, within this desert world. With one single melody, Austin lays the foundation for the entire game. Everything else is an evolution of this main theme. More on that later and why this is an incredible way to set the stage for the game. Where things start to get interesting is in the second area of the game. When I played the game myself, this is where I came across another robed figure. At first I thought it was just a computer, an AI, but quickly I realized that it was actually another person, but they had no name and they couldn't talk with me. But somehow we had to complete this journey together. This is the groundbreaking connection that I want to create in my own projects. Connecting two complete strangers who have almost nothing in common, coming together to complete a goal and create new experiences. This idea is enhanced through the music in the game. For example, the only real form of communication you have with this new friend of yours is one small little chirp. I use this small chirp to get my friend's attention, to alert them of danger, to celebrate, all without words. Interesting enough, this chirp is a combination of birds, flutes, cello, and vocal sounds put together by the game's sound designer, Steve Johnson. But additionally, the soundtrack itself enhances this concept of connection through precise instrumentation. Austin purposely started the game with a single cello solo because the cello musically comes to embody the player. As the game progresses, different instruments come in to better represent what is seen on screen. The bass flute represents the angelic white robed ancestors that guide you. The full orchestra embodies the mountain itself. And I believe that the harp and viola represent the friend you encounter. With this in mind, Austin creates an adaptive soundscape that can stand alone as its own story. You first hear the harp and viola when you first encounter your friend in the game. And based on your proximity to them, the harp will become louder or softer. This is called vertical layering, a wonderful way to build an immensely interactive environment by layering tracks on top of each other and pulling them in or out of the mix as the gameplay evolves. So in the end, someone who plays the game entirely by themselves will have a very different musical experience compared to someone that meets a friend along the way. A subtle yet incredible way to integrate music into the story. Things like this subconsciously enhance how the story evokes an emotion. If the player is alone for a while, then meets a friend later on, they'll find it more enjoyable. Whereas if your friend leaves in the middle of your story, the world feels more empty. And the music alone portrays this. About halfway through the journey, you fall into a dark cavern. Here the music shifts to deep, ambient sounds. Additionally, an instrument called the serpent is layered onto these deep tones to help create a very chilling atmosphere. In my experience, this is where I became very cautious and started to tread lightly. But the chirping sounds of my friend helped me to avoid the dangers of what was inside the caves.
After making it through the cavern, we started our final climb up the mountain, and there we found ourselves caught in a snowstorm. In this environment, the only way to keep warm was to stay close and make an occasional chirp to warm each other up. As we kept climbing the mountain, it seemed like all hope was lost as we both collapsed into the snow. Yet out of that came a sudden burst of energy, and next thing I knew, I was flying up the mountain. This is where the full orchestra came back in to really build the energy of the moment. If you listen carefully, you can actually pick up an elongated version of the same theme that played at the beginning of the game. As I reached the top, it was here that my friend seemed like he knew what was about to happen. Every time I turned towards what looked like the end of the game, he would frantically chirp to get me to stay. Once he got my attention, he drew a little heart in the snow, then bid me goodbye to finish the game. There I learned the entire story of the game. The white clad figures that have led me to the mountain are actually people who have gone through the same journey I have. The friend I made had also gone through the journey. And with that foreknowledge, he was able to show me secret areas or keep me out of danger. Then I realized that I was destined to play the game again and be someone else's guide to share my knowledge and experiences with someone else. And those that gain enough knowledge and experience receive a white robe themselves as a symbol of wisdom. And to top it off, the end credits for the game has this beautiful lyric piece that quotes pieces of great literature. From the Aeneid, to each his day is given. From Beowulf, time it is for me to go. From the Iliad, Lost is my homecoming. And from a haiku by Matsuo Bashao, Along this road goes no one this autumn eve. And from Joan of Arc, Do not pity me, I was born for this. And those five quotes are actually put into different languages and put over this melodic piece that plays as the player is taken back to the beginning of the game. What a metaphor for life itself, that we're all on our own journeys with our own knowledge and experience. We can either use that to help each other grow or not, but it's only possible through the shared experiences and trust in each other. All of this was wrapped up in journey. Everything about it contributed to telling that story from the art design, the lore, the music, the story. That's what I know art is capable of. And it's what I now strive to replicate in my own work. So if you would, join me in 2021 as I seek new ways to cultivate connection through my own music.